all atoms of the element have the same number of protons. That is how we define our elements by the number of protons in them. But there's nothing that is, sets the number of neutrons for an atom. So elements will have isotopes, atoms that, that contain different number of neutrons on them. Isotopes generally have the same chemistry, same chemical reactions. There are subtle differences that do occur, but in large part, uh, the reactions or chemistry, the isotopes are the same. Isotopes do vary in mass and mass-related properties. So we can separate uh, isotopes using diffusion or centrifuge or some other properties. But another way that isotopes vary is they vary in terms of stability. Some isotopes are stable, some isotopes are not stable. They will decay at some point in time, throwing out radioactive particles and turn into another element. We identify our isotopes with atomic notation. So we use a symbol of the element. Left subscript would be the atomic number. And that's always a match set between the symbol and the atomic number. And sometimes because of that, some people will not write in that left subscript, the atomic number. The left superscript is a mass number. That's the number of all the nuclear particles, protons plus neutrons. So Z, the atomic number, is the number of protons. A, the mass number, is the protons plus neutrons. So to get neutrons, we do A minus Z, and that'll give us the number of neutrons present. Some examples of isotopes. The way that we speak them is the name of the element followed by the mass number. So hydrogen one. We have one proton and no neutrons. Hydrogen two, one proton and one neutron. Hydrogen three, one proton and two neutrons. And of these, the third one is radioactive. So the first two, hydrogen one, hydrogen two, are stable. Hydrogen one is like 99.9% .9 of all hydrogen. We have a small amount of hydrogen two and extremely small amount of hydrogen three tritium. Another two examples, carbon 12, we have six protons. 12 minus six is six neutrons. Carbon 14, six protons. 14 minus six, eight neutrons. And carbon 12 is stable, but carbon 14 is radioactive. And carbon 14 is used for um, carbon testing of archaeological sites, things that contain car carbon matter in them. So when they do decay, they throw out a particle from the nucleus and they turn into another element in the process. So we have a handful of things that can be thrown out of the nucleus during radioactive decay processes. So alpha particle is a helium nucleus, a helium-4 nucleus. So we can write it with a HD for helium, we can write it with the alpha symbol. But uh, it has two protons, so left subscript is two, it has two neutrons, so the total mass number is four. So we're going to ask you to be able to identify these items based on like mass and charge of these particles. So alpha is our biggest particle. It gets thrown out of the nucleus, but it can't penetrate much else. It can be stopped by very little material. A beta particle is an electron. So the charge is a negative one. It's being thrown out of a positive nucleus, but it's carrying away a negative one charge. And it has negligible mass, so we just designate as zero mass. So it has zero mass and negative one charge. And the process that occurs in the decay process is we'll cover the reactions in the next video. So a neutron will throw out a negative one charge in the electron and leave a positive one charge behind. So the neutron turns into a proton by throwing out a electron. We can also eject a positron. Positron is an antimatter electron. So it'll have a plus one charge, the opposite charge of electron, but it still has a zero mass. 
And uh, the symbol for beta, we can use E for electron or V, beta symbol. Uh, same with a positron, it means E for electron or the beta symbol. But now the charge is changed to a positive instead of a negative up here. So it has zero mass plus one charge. And in this case, a proton throws out a positive charge, positron, and leaves behind a neutral neutron. We can have a gamma ray. A gamma ray uh, we represent with the gamma uh, symbol, and it has a, a zero charge and a zero mass. And this is this high energy electromagnetic radiation, higher energy than X-rays. And it won't change a nucleus. It does not take out anything that will change the basic nucleus. It won't take out matter or charge. It won't change the nucleus. Uh, so this doesn't occur by itself, but comes with another decay process. So sometimes it doesn't occur simultaneously. It will uh, leave a metastable nucleus that will hang around for maybe a couple of days before it finally throws out that extra energy as a gamma ray. We can also have um, protons being thrown out. So that will be a charge of one, a mass of one. And we can also have neutrons being thrown out, a charge of zero and mass of one. And um, we'll see um, a lot of neutrons being thrown out with one of the other decay processes that we have, where instead of throwing something out of the nucleus, the nucleus splits in two, spontaneous fission. And it'll throw out a couple extra neutrons as we end up with two new elements instead of one new element. 